Welcome to this video. My name is Pedro Rodrigues Ribeiro. I'm a psychologist from Portugal. I wasn't... Uh, I didn't intend to uh, make uh, another video um, this, this week. Uh, and certainly not in English. However, a thought... Uh, came into my mind as I received uh, a book from Arnold Lazarus. Well, Arnold Lazarus didn't send me a book. Un unfortunately, is this, this isn't possible anymore. Uh, unless someone happened to, to discover a way to make a communication to another dimension or into the beyond. However, um, I so I bought uh, a book from Arnold Lazarus, w where the book describes something that he structure among uh, the idea and the utilization of imagery guided imagery. Uh, visualization techniques uh, etc um, which is something uh, a lot uh, uh, very curious because uh, Arnold Lazarus was one of the fathers of behavioral therapy uh, although he was an, a, an integrative therapist uh, and his uh, model the multi-model therapy he integrated a lot of techniques and principles from other um, from other models from other psychotherapeutic approaches um, something that I uh, explained in my video um, about multi multi-model therapy so uh, in a sense it's not um, it's not strange that Arnold Lazarus um, created or uh, talked about the, the, the importance of guided imagery of visualization techniques into um, psychotherapy and psychotherapeutic intervention. Uh, my oddness is um, in, f in the fact that nowadays a lot of therapists are uh, are not into those kind of experiential approaches. It's not because of their um, their uh, training or the specific therapeutic model. Because if you if you look in, into what cognitive therapy and CBT and other approaches, even from different perspectives, um, uh, generated a lot of therapists from a lot of uh, different uh, point of views and different therapeutic models utilized at some point uh, visualization and guided uh, guided imagery. For example. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, a lot of books and a lot of articles that um, described Aaron Beck, the father, one of the fathers of cognitive cognitive therapy, um, utilizing visualiz visualization techniques and guided imagery. Uh, some might say that uh, Beck, uh, or the way that Beck utilized visualization and guided imagery was a lot similar to certain uh, hypnotic approaches. Certainly Michael Yapko considers this. So it's not unusual to, um, to go to the literature and realize that a lot of models in their base uh, conceptualization utilized uh, guided imagery and 
visualization techniques. However, nowadays, we don't see a lot of uh, therapists utilizing those kind of techniques. And that's a, a waste because we know that what we perceived as a reality, what we can imagine, what, we, what scenarios we can construct and what memories we can invoke uh, clearly have a significance into our development, into our uh, health. For example, the placebo effect. If I convince myself and if I expect something to work, my mind and my body will act uh, as if something happened, something good. On, on the other side, the nocebo effect, the opposite, if I expected or if I believed that something can go wrong, my mind and my body will produce or will believe that something is wrong. For example, someone that is uh, dealing with extreme anxiety and they started to um, and if they have a, a really tiresome day uh, really tired really stressed and activated uh, they uh, their uh, breathing rhythm or their heart rhythm may may arise when they started to notice that they might believe that they are suffering from uh, past uh, past anxiety experiences. So, if they believe that, they may start to get anxiety. They may start to act as if something they, they that they believe happens happen. So, the mind is a very powerful. Uh, tool for good but also for bad. Uh, a lot of chronic diseases have uh, risk factors that involve uh, psychological variables. We know that anxiety and stress may weaken, uh, may weaken the immunity system and people might might contract cancer from that or at least some uh, some forms of cancer so the mind is a very powerful tool guided imagery and visualization techniques can be a powerful a way of eliciting of invoking positive experiences and certainly uh, emotional repairing uh, uh, possibilities. If, for example, I can visualize um, my um, a, a past relationship, someone that I can I I can't have the opportunity to talk to anymore, or the idealite idealized verse, uh, version of that person if I can visualize it or if I can project it to an empty chair or starting a dialogue with the, the benefits that can arise from that experience might, might repair that relationship or at least the idealized ver version of that relationship. People can change uh, simply by uh, visualizing and to uh, accessing key uh, memories and key experiences. Uh, certainly, if you focused on the idea of relaxation, of the, uh, the concepts of relaxation, uh, of images that can translate relaxation to you your body and your mind can relax 
even if you are um, standing up, uh, uh, sitting in a chair, uh, well, at least not in the in the traditional sense of lying down in a comfortable way. So it's possible to do that kind of stuff. Uh, for example, high performance uh, athletes train systematically to visualize in their heads um, all the, the, the functions, all the scenarios, the possible scenarios, and uh, perceiving them as to be very successful. It's, uh, it's one of the principles of self-efficacy. If I perceive myself to doing something with uh, success, I can believe that I can be able to do that. And certainly my motivation grows, my perception of self-efficacy grows, my belief that I can do it is uh, overwhelming. So in utilizing guided imagery and to utilizing visualization techniques you can uh, achieve high results independently of the model of the psychotherapy uh, psychotherapeutic model that you utilized you can be you can be a psychoanalyst you can be a psychodynamic psychotherapist you can be an existential psychotherapist a gestalt psychotherapist, a cognitive therapist, well, you, you get my point. You can, you can be whatever you choose to be and integrate those kind of uh, approaches, those kind of techniques. It certainly can uh, boost more efficacy into your um, intervention, especially with children and adolescents since their mind is prone to utilizing imagination and utilizing creativity into exploring new possibilities so if you intervene with children and adolescents that's a fun way and a powerful way to uh, establish a therapeutic relationship and a positive therapeutic relationship in the sense that you can uh, make changes happen. So, uh, in conclusion, I, I would advise anyone to utilize more guided imagery, more visualization techniques. Don't be afraid. You are not going to be... Uh, uh, a voodoo priest or a charlatan or a, or an esoteric alternative therapist for asking someone to imagine only imagine the possibility of a new life and uh, in a, and at a certain point start to believe that it can't be possible it can't uh, it can't is it can exist so that's my uh, the, these are my thoughts about uh, guided imagery and visualization techniques uh, obviously I'm a g great fan so let me know what you think about it please subscribe the channel I see you next time